Sorry. Okay. Hello and welcome back to a new season of videos. Uh, this series is uh, called uh, Vocabulary 101 or a primer in words. The agenda for this course would be not only to learn a lot of words, but also learn techniques of learning words so that we can also do a lot of word learning on our own. And uh, to make it a habit rather than a one-time weekend activity. And not only a habit for the exam, but, but uh, a long-term habit for the life maybe. Because learning words is one of the most uh, fun things you can do. And it may make a lot of difference to your brain. Uh, we will talk more about that some other day. Today we will start talking about words as well as techniques. Okay, so okay. Uh, technique number one is going to be etymology or root-based learning. Uh, it is one of the fastest methods of learning words. Uh, essentially, it's about uh, identifying the root of the word and connecting other words with that root. Now, instead of elaborating the theory, let me straight away move to an example. Or let me make you think of an example. So what I need to do is, I need to think of words starting with this prefix. Prefix means of uh, something which is at the beginning of the word. So this is the prefix, which is tele. Think of as many words as you can with it. Hit the pause button and uh, hit the play again when you have a few words, at least three, four words. It's a very, very easy prefix. I'm sure you've heard of words starting with tele, okay? Okay, I'm sure you did that and uh, the words that you got must be very easy ones, telephone, television, okay. So let's look at each word in detail and also see what other words you can connect with these each word, okay. So let's begin with telephone for example. Tele in Latin means far. Now where does Latin come in? English is a derivative language of Greek and Latin. I mean uh, it is made up of these two languages and a lot of other influences also. But for uh, so now we'll assume that it's a lot of Greek and Latin, okay? So tele is a Latin root, which means far, and phone means sound. So telephone means far away sound. Now if you think about it, that's what your phone does, right? It brings you sounds from far away. So even if the person is not near to you, you can still talk to them. So now, if I think of the, uh, the idea would be to understand that first of all, it is made up of two parts, and then think what other word can we connect with it. So for example, with phone, I'll give you a list of few words. Uh, and the words would be euphony, cacophony, symphony. Uh, uh, for example, euphony is good sound. Now if you know the meaning of euphony, euphony is good sound or something that sounds pleasant to the ear, you can pretty much predict the meaning of the prefix eu. It must mean good because you know phony means sound. Okay. Uh, cacophony is bad sound uh, or noise or a din or a very... Uh, a uh, lot of ruckus going on in a place, okay? So cacophony is bad sound. Uh, phony again we know means sounds or caco must mean bad. We look at other words connected to caco in a bit, okay? Now, uh, symphony is an easy enough word. Uh, you, I'm sure you know of it. Symphony, sim means together and phony means sound. So symphony are sounds together or sounds which are sounding uh, good to you, okay? okay. So let's look at uh, television. Uh, tele is far and viz is to see, look, watch, uh, basically the act of seeing, okay? So television is basically seeing things from far away. That's what you can do on your uh, TV. You can see images from a far away place. You don't have to be next to the event to watch it, okay? Uh, viz means to see, and I'm sure you know a couple of very easy words like visible and invisible and visual. You just need to connect those words with this particular root. Uh, some interesting words would be vista, and uh, vista is, is a basically a pleasing view, typically from a long, narrow uh, opening or a window, okay? So that kind of a view is called a vista. Uh, visage is, uh, V-I-S-A-G-E is uh, visage, and that means the profile of a person's face or in terms of form, features, or proportions, uh, or basically how their face appears, okay? And uh, yeah, so that would be it for this. Video is another word, another form, viz and v, v i s and v i d. Okay, so uh, telegraph or telegram, we know now tele means far. 
Graph or gram means to write. Now you might be getting a little confused that why are there two roots for the same idea, but it's just a change of a letter at the end, and it happens. I mean, the language has been there for 2,000 years, so words change slowly a little bit, and multiple forms are introduced. So, but graph and gram both mean to write. So, a telegraph or telegram is essentially when you're writing far away. So, what happens in a telegraph is you write a message here, and it gets. Uh, send across 2000 miles or across the ocean also so writing it far away is called a telegraph or a telegram now if i connect try to connect with graph you again you're going to find a lot of easy words for example autograph okay auto means self okay auto rickshaw is a self propelling rickshaw because earlier in a rickshaw people had to use their feet to move it but now it works on its own so auto rickshaw right auto means self automata automatic working on its own so autograph is your own writing or your own signature essentially okay uh, biography bio means life uh, graphy means to write so biography is uh, writing about somebody's life okay autobiography if you decide to write your own life story yourself uh, that would be an autobiography auto means self bio means life graph means to write okay uh, cacography would be bad handwriting or bad writing, right? Calligraphy is beautiful writing. Cali comes from calisthenics, which is graceful movement of body or gymnastics. Uh, you can look at the meaning of that word also. And calligraphy means beautiful handwriting, okay? Easy word is photograph, but you might not have thought about it too much. Uh, photo is light, photon coming from photon. So photo is light and graph means to write. So when you use a camera, what you're doing is essentially you are writing down, but with the help of light rather than with a pencil or a pen, right? So I hope you get that idea. Photograph is writing by light, and I'm sure you know what the word means, okay? Lithograph is writing on stone. Now you know graph means to write, so lithograph, litho would mean stone because you know the meaning, right? So lithograph means writing on stone. A monogram is essentially a motif or a design with two or more letters which indicate your initials. So for example, if your name is Karan Johar, you would have K dot J written on your handkerchief or on your cufflinks or on your suit or somewhere. Uh, or if your name is Anthony Hopkins, you would have A dot H written or just an A maybe because your name starts with A. So that kind of a mark or a design to indicate something as your property is called a monogram. Mono means one. Now we looked at this word lithograph earlier, which was writing on stone. And we're looking at monogram, which is uh, one or two essentially. So if I put these mono and lith together, it becomes monolith, which is made up of, which means uh, made up of one stone. Mono is one, lith is stone. So made up of one stone, which means nowadays, which means something which is very, very huge. Because earlier, if you want to make a statue, and if you want to make a big statue, you'll have to find a big rock. You can't make three, four smaller rocks and then try and make a statue. So monolith is something which is huge, made up of one big rock, okay? Telepathy is an interesting word. Uh, tele means far and pathos means feeling. So being able to feel from far away, uh, that would be telepathy. Uh, uh, not only being able to feel somebody else's emotion, but maybe being able to read their th thoughts or being able to transfer your thoughts to their mind directly without the use of standard methods like talking or writing or using some kind of non-verbal communication. So directly mind-to-mind -mind communication or being able to read somebody's mind without being there from far away, um, that kind of a power is called telepathy. It's not, I mean, uh, the existence of such a thing is not proven, but it's, uh, it's there in movies and TV shows. If you've seen this movie called X-Men, that uh, Professor Xavier, the bald man, uh, is telepathic. So basically, he can do mind reading and talk without talking and just put their thoughts into somebody else's brain, okay? Uh, we also want to look at pathos a little more. There are a couple of, uh, few more interesting words with this particular root. Uh, for example, sympathy. Now, sim we know means together and pathis, pathos means uh, feeling. So feeling, Together with someone or uh, basically giving them support or feeling kindness or pity towards them if somebody especially goes through a bad period or an accident or something goes wrong in their life. So that kind of a feeling towards someone is known as sympathy. 
Uh, though a better emotion or a better way to deal with such situation is to, I mean, basically to do, do not sympathize, empathize. Now, empathy is not feeling together, but feeling the way they are feeling. Uh, trying to walk their path, trying to walk in their shoes, trying to feel exactly how they are feeling and then probably communicating with them. So that kind of an understanding, somebody else's pain is, is known as empathy. Uh, another word is apathy. Apathy is indifference where uh, you cannot basically understand somebody else's emotions or feeling or you, are, you don't really care about them and you're indifferent about it. For example, government's apathy towards the plight of the citizens in terms of maintaining the roads or basic infrastructure. So apathy means indifference or not feeling what the other person is feeling. Antipathy. Anti, again, is a very common prefix. Most of us, uh, a lot of us would be aware of it as opposite. So anti-malaria, anti-biotic, anti-terrorist, anti-social. These are, uh, I mean, you'll find a lot of other words also. So antipathy is feeling opposite of uh, what someone else is feeling. So for example, somebody wants to stay at home, you definitely want to go out. So there is antipathy involved, okay? So it could be considered uh, opposite behavior or uh, maybe a kind of hate also, okay? So I hope that makes sense, yeah? Okay. Teleportation or teleport again is not a very common word. It's a sci-fi. When I say sci-fi, I mean a science fiction word. Okay, uh, the technology has not yet been created. But I'm, if you've seen the Star Trek movie or the TV shows, I'm sure you've seen people get into a machine and they magically go from one place to another using magic or technology. That would be teleportation. So, for example, if I were to vanish from here, that would be teleportation. Okay. Telekinesis, if you've seen uh, X-Men movies, uh, there is that Professor Xavier uh, and another character who can move objects using their mind, using the power of the mind. They can push or pull objects and lift them up or even lift themselves up and levitate. So tele means far and kinesis means movement. So being able to create movement from far away is telekinesis. Okay. So let's look at uh, each of EU words. EU means uh, well is, uh, as a prefix. Now euphony means good sound or a well sound. Uh, eupeptic means good digestion. Anything which aids your digestion or helps your digestion or causes good digestion is a eupeptic. Opposite of eupeptic would be dyspeptic. Again, this is a common enough prefix. I'm sure you've heard it of in words like dysfunctional or dismal, okay? So, so there is a positive prefix, which is you, and there is a negative prefix, which is dis. So these ideas will also help uh, organize information in your head better. So let's go back to you. Uh, euthanasia is a good death, the, or, or what we know as mercy killing. Uh, for example, if somebody is suffering from a terminal disease where there is no hope for a cure and it's causing them a lot of pain, some people want to uh, uh, willingly terminate their lives rather than go through that pain. So that kind of a death where uh, it is given out of mercy is called mercy killing or euthanasia. So the root is eu, which means good, and thanasia comes from the Greek god of death. The word for Greek god of death, like Yamraj in Hindi, is thanatos. So uh, euthanasia means a good death, okay? Uh, euphemism is essentially a polite or a mild way of saying something harsh so or blunt. So something, if something is going to be very, very rude, so instead of calling it that, you use an easier word. So instead, instead of, for example, instead of say, pe people don't say somebody died, they say they passed away or, or they went to heaven. So it's a milder way of, uh, a milder phrase for death essentially. Or instead of uh, firing, uh, let's say in a company, somebody is fired, instead of saying that he was fired, we say he was let go. Or instead of cutting down the word force, we want to use uh, downsizing as the word. So words uh, which are used, uh, milder words which are used in place of harsher words, uh, to make the situation more gentle is called uh, euphemism. The opposite of euphemism is dysphemism, where uh, for a mild word or a normal word, you want to use a harsh word. For example, instead of um, a mental asylum, you want to call it a loony bin. The mental asylum is a normal word, but loony bin is a derogatory word or a negative word. So euphemism and dysphemism, okay? So uh, eulogy is high praise or uh, 
uh, good things uh, spoken or written about someone, praising them, okay? So typically it is used in case of funerals. I'm sure you've seen it in movies where somebody dies and then somebody comes in the church and makes a speech. So that kind of a speech or a written article in the newspaper extolling the virtues of someone is called an eulogy, okay? Again, the root is you. Logy is writing or, uh, or the idea and good idea or good writing about someone is eulogy, okay? Stop. Okay, so extending that idea further, as we discussed, you is a good root. Uh, let's look at another good root, which is bene. And let's learn it in conjunction with its opposite uh, prefix, which is uh, mal. So bene means good, and mal means bad. I am pretty sure you've heard, words, heard of words like malfunction, malpractice, and malnutrition. Malfunction is not functioning properly or bad function. Malpractices are poor practices or illegal practices and malnutrition is when you're not getting enough food. So mal means bad and bene means good. Bene might be slightly new, but mal, I'm sure these three words you've seen earlier. So let's look at a few parallel connections. Uh, benediction and malediction. So bene means good, diction means to speak. So saying good things or uh, basically blessing someone. So uh, uh, live long and prosper, for example, if you meet someone and say, be well, you're, you're wishing them well or you're saying good things, so essentially it becomes a blessing to them. The opposite of that would be a malediction, which would be a curse when you're trying to, uh, when, when you say harsh things to someone, that is a curse, okay? So a malediction. Uh, benign is harmless and uh, malignant, which the form is slightly different, but, but I hope you get the idea. Benign is harmless and malignant is very, very harmful. Benefactor is somebody who helps you out, somebody supports you. A malefactor is a villain in your life, okay? Uh, these are a few more words. The meaning, the finding of meaning I leave to you uh, because I hope you've gotten the idea already that how this thing is working, okay? So uh, your homework is to find the meaning of the rest of the words and uh, see whether the bene and mal connection works or not, okay? The words are all there, yeah? Yeah, so I hope you did that. Uh, you found out the meaning of each of those words and connected them together as a, as a group, okay? Now, learning, in a, learning these words in a group really, really helps because uh, remembering words in a list uh, which, are, which is not connected, which is not, uh, which is not a common thread together is very difficult and boring. Here is a lot of uh, functions of your brain being triggered. So a map making function essentially is very, very useful for memory, okay? Uh, a few words which might not use the same form, for example, is born. It is another form of bene because now born is almost almost French. So we moved from English to French. But again, a lot of uh, French words and phrases have become a very integral or in fact a permanent part of the English language. For example, I'm sure you've used this word called bona fide. Uh, now, bona means good and fide means uh, faith. So bona fide is a document of good faith. You typically get it from your academic institution or some place indicating that uh, that you've been a good citizen and a good participant in your academic program, okay? So, bona fide is uh, a document of good faith. Fit is faith. Fit is again another rule that at least one word you would know, which is confidence. So, confidence is faith in yourself, in your abilities. Uh, uh, other words with con the root fit are diffidence, which is the opposite of confidence. Confidence means faith in yourself, faith in your abilities. Uh, diffidence means lack of faith in yourself, being a little shy, being a little quiet and maybe in public places. So confidence and diffidence. Another word which, again, if, you, if you're on the internet, I'm sure you use, it's called Wi-Fi. You should think of the full form of Wi-Fi. It is wireless fidelity. Wireless, we know, I'm sure you know why, because there is no wire connecting uh, your computer to the internet router. Uh, and fidelity, why? Because fidelity means faithfulness or being true to the original. That means when the data is transferred from the, that machine to another machine across the uh, wireless, the faith is maintained. The same data is being sent. There would not be any error in this uh, transfer of data, and hence uh, wireless fidelity. Another common word, which again, in the short form, most people might not be able to connect it with confidence and diffidence, is uh, 
uh, hi-fi. Uh, hi-fi is a short form for high fidelity. It is typically used in uh, used to describe music systems or uh, uh, or sound systems essentially. So high fidelity means high faithfulness to the original sound. I'm sure you've tried listening to music on a not so good quality radio, and the sound quality is not the same as the original as it would have been in the studio. But if you get a really good system or what is called a hi-fi system, the sound quality will be as good as it was while being recorded in the studio. So high fidelity. Uh, just the word fidelity means faithfulness. Uh, infidel uh, uh, is somebody who hasn't got faith. So fidelity is typically used in marriages. Okay, So for example, fidelity is very, very important for marriages or marriages would fall apart. Infidelity is typically used in marriages uh, where one or the other partner is unfaithful or cheating on their or their husband or wife or boyfriend or girlfriend. So that situation is called infidelity. The word infidel is typically used to indicate people who do not believe in a particular religion, religion especially Christianity. So, for example, uh, a Christian would call a non-Christian, not these days, but in uh, maybe Middle Ages, infidel, somebody who lacks faith. The Urdu Persian word for it. I think is kafir. I'm not sure. I'll check it and, and correct them if it's wrong. So, so uh, we were at uh, uh, we were at confidence, diffidence, wireless fidelity, high fidelity, and infidelity, and just the word infidel. Okay. We started from bona fide, by the way. Okay. Yeah. So, bon voyage is is happy voyage. Bon means good, and voyage means a journey. So you use Bon Voyage to wish someone a happy journey. Okay? When you, in fact, instead of saying happy journey, you can say Bon Voyage. Okay? Uh, a Bon Vivant, uh, Bon means good and Viva means life. So somebody who's lover of a good life, he wants to eat good food, drink good wine, go to fancy places, meet with a lot of people and live life to its fullest, that kind of person is called a Bon Vivant. Okay? So Bon is the same as Bene. Maybe you should th try and find a couple of uh, more phrases starting with uh, born. Okay. Okay. So I hope you got the idea of how etymology works or what we mean by root-based learning. So a few more roots are given in the description and words are there. So maybe you can find the meaning on your own and try and connect those words. Uh, in in coming videos, we will look at a few more roots and a few more uh, uh, cluster of words connected to etymology. And then later, we'll try and move to other kind of clusters, for example, uh, learning words uh, by finding their stories, learning words from context, learning words from reading books and comics material, uh, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, but for today, I hope etymology and understanding how roots and prefixes work uh, uh, made sense to you. And maybe you can start noticing these kind of connections and patterns between these words, as well as start using it to build your uh, vocabulary database. Because as you can see, one uh, prefix or a root can open up a lot of words for you. So the rate of learning can be very, very high using this particular method. We, we strongly recommend it. Okay? If you're looking for material, uh, uh, what kind of books uh, to go through this, and in most bookstores, you'll find this wonderful red little book called Word Power Made Easy by Norman Lewis. We cannot emphasize enough the importance of this book. It's a fantastic book. and, and uh, Think of it as a jump start in your etymological uh, uh, discovery process. And you will learn a lot of words and you will learn them very, very quickly. So remember, word power made easy by Norman Lewis. You should definitely get it. I'm sure it is available in most bookstores across the country. Okay? So I hope you had fun and we look at more words in coming videos. Thank you and see you later.